Okay, hi. Uh, so my name is Madhav. I'm one of the tech leads for SIG Contrabacks and we'll do a round of intros, but we are going to talk a little bit about lessons from community growth, uh, sustainability, and a few things we've learned along the way, uh, the, as we've seen in Contrabacks. So who are we? Uh, as I said, my name is Madhav. I'm one of the tech leads of SIG Contrabacks. Uh, I have with me Priyanka and Kathleen. So Priyanka, do you want to? Hey everyone, my name is Priyanka Sagu. Um, I work at SUSE as a Kubernetes integration engineer and I'm also one of the tech leads for SIG Contribux. And I'm Kazlyn Fields. I'm a developer advocate at Google Cloud where I focus on GKE and open source Kubernetes and I'm also a co-chair of SIG Contributor Experience and a CNCF ambassador. <laughs> All right, so um, before we start, right, just a call to help. We need help migrating Prow jobs to community clusters. Uh, if you're uh, interested in that sort of thing, if you're into infrastructure, management, development, migrations, and all of that, check out the issue that's linked there. We definitely need all the help we can get. So that being said, uh, this is the title of our talk. It's kind of long. Uh, so we thought it might be a good idea to structure the talk around the title itself. So that being said, let's start off with what is SIG Contrabex? One of my favorite things, Madhav. Thank you. <laughs> so first off, uh, one of the first questions anyone asks about getting involved with Kubernetes is like, how do I get involved? Where do I get involved? Um, and an important thing to understand about Kubernetes is that it breaks down its work into special interest groups, which Contribex is one of them. There are many. Um, and then work is further broken down into sub-projects. So the way that Contribex gets its work done is through these sub-projects. And we're going to list them. There are a lot. I went to two other maintainer track sessions today and they had like four each and that was just all they talked about. We can't do that. So <laughs> we have the community sub-project, the community management sub-project, the contributor documentation sub-project, the dev stats sub-project. So community um, and community management. Community is all about the overall community repo, um, community group documentation and operations. Uh, management manages operations and policy for upstream uh, community group communication platforms. <laughs> like. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to it in a second. Writes and maintains, uh, the contributor documentation group writes and maintains documentation around contributing to Kubernetes, also one of the first things that people ask about. And DevStats is, I feel like little known, but a great resource for understanding the uh, Kubernetes community as it, at a glance through numbers. We also have the election subproject, which is a new subproject and oversees running elections in the community. Uh, it also maintains documentation and software that is used for elections. It can be used beyond Kubernetes. I don't know if it actually is used by any other projects, but it can be. Um, we also have events for contributor-focused events, like the Contributor Summit that happened here at KubeCon and happens at each KubeCon. GitHub Management, which does all kinds of things with managing how Kubernetes works on GitHub. Kubernetes is huge, so that's a huge job. Mentoring, helping new folks get involved with the project. Lots of things uh, that we have to do there. Slack infrastructure, uh, of course, the Kubernetes community operates on Slack, so there are all sorts of tools and automation, as well as moderation for Slack. And we also have the contributor comms group, which manages the Kate's contributors account on Mastodon and Twitter, and uh, all sorts of other ways of communicating with contributors, such as blogs and emails. Next. Um, let's talk about code quality, stability, and security. SIG Contribux helps there as well. Um, we have this sub-project called GitHub Administration. That group collaborate with the uh, other different parts of Kubernetes project, security response committee, code of conduct committee, to handle security incidents um, that take place in our GitHub infrastructure, just uh, in general and around the community. Uh, post this, the admins also provide direct feedback um, to GitHub, uh, we have a monthly meeting with the GitHub team, so we provide direct feedbacks there. Contribux also helps other SIGs if they are in need of legal compliance reviews uh, for their design document. For example, we recently ha have one from SIG testing uh, where we needed to work with Code of Conduct Committee uh, Kubernetes, uh, CNCF, and also get some advice from GitHub. Moving forward to non-code contributions, uh, we recently uh, 
revitalized initiative uh, on non-core contributions. We have Noha Abrahams in the room. Uh, thank you to him uh, for doing all the great work there. Folks working to make known contributions more actionable and developing generalized takeaways for CNCF project as a whole. There is a meeting running in that. Uh, we usually get notifications are in our SIG Contribux channel, so look for them. I think we have a schedule here. Um, it's on uh, second and fourth Tuesday of each month. And if you need more help, please reach out to us in SIG Contribux. Oh yes, community growth. Let's talk a little bit about it. I mentioned earlier that GitHub is really hard for us to manage because the Kubernetes community is ridiculously enormous. And this is an example of that. This is a, a graph that I pulled from a report from 2019. And this just shows all the way from 2014 um, when the project first started to kind of exist. Um, <laughs> and you can see how incredibly fast that growth curve is from 2014 to 2019, where it looks like it ends around 35,000 contributors in 2019. Today, judging by dev stats, when I went to it two days ago, <laughs> we have around 83,000 contributors who are making around 3.9 million contributions. And all of that, by the way, is reviewed by only like 6,000 reviewers. So you can see that we have scale problems. Let's talk about how we address those. So we have some automation and tooling around that uh, to embrace this growth we have in our community. And we are continuously working on improving our tools. Um, these tools we have for managing our membership, org membership management, uh, all the way to our collaboration communication tools. First up, we have Peribolos. Uh, this is a tool we use to uh, manage our GitHub org managements. Uh, it is for uh, all our new membership or requests, as well as um, managing all our GitHub permissions across the SIGs. Um, so how does this work? Just a brief diagram here we have it's, it's similar to what Kubernetes does. Uh, we have our declared members uh, declared in a YAML file format, and Peribolos take that as a source of truth and tries to uh, match our uh, declared org configuration in GitHub, in our GitHub ores. Recently, we made some progress, uh, made some improvements on our Peribolos tooling. We also added functionality to uh, manage what GitHub teams people are part of, we can maintain, uh, manage that functionality as well as with Peribolos now. A big shout out to Nigel. Um, he helped us a lot with bringing some automation for us uh, to automate all our uh, Zoom meetings that we, we have across all our SIGs uh, to aut aut bring automation to upload them to YouTube. And if you're interested in learning about that automation, it's another place we would love to have help. Yeah. <laughs> And, and reach out to us and see contributes. Another one we are currently working on is a mailing list migration functionality. Currently, we are moving away from uh, our Google mailing list groups to bring them under uh, Kubernetes mailing list. Uh, so we are working on some functionality in, uh, to improve our already existing groups tooling to uh, add some feature to migrate a huge list of members we have from one mailing list to the destination mailing list. We outgrew it and we had to get something bigger. <laughs> so um, I think based on that, it's pretty evident that Kubernetes community is growing at a rapid pace. It's already pretty big. Uh, it's starting to grow even more. So when, as and when that happens, past constructs of what we had to manage new contributors to help new contributors terminologies and concepts start becoming oversaturated. N terminology starts becoming overloaded. So recently, uh, previously we had a Slack channel on the Kubernetes Slack to help new uh, contributors and new members, but that sort of became overloaded uh, in terms of what it meant. So we did like a whole overall of what our contributor-centric Slack channels look like. Uh, so Bob Killen, who is also one of the chairs for Contrabex and a steering committee member, uh, did a lot of this work, migrated all of them over to the new channel, added uh, automation to let people know what these channels are 
for as and when they join them. So uh, as and when we talk, you'll see like a theme emerge. Whatever work we do, we do it, but then we back it up by automation so we don't have to do it again. So this way we have a documented and auditable way of doing things and making sure that if things go wrong, we know how it went wrong, why it went wrong, and in the future, how we prevent it from not going wrong. So um, that's com community growth. We also have a huge aspect that we are spending a lot of time thinking about uh, around community sustainability. So uh, in, in the Kubernetes project, as and when you contribute, uh, you can apply for org membership. And the way org memberships work is uh, you send in an app, you open a GitHub issue as your application, and then uh, you just need sponsors from the people who have you've worked with who are already org members. And then once you meet those requirements, a PR is created and a bot sends you that org membership invite, and that gives you elevated privileges, the Kubernetes GitHub org. But now, more than 50% of those org members that we have right now are inactive. They haven't been active for years. So that means elevated org privileges lie in the hands of people who are not yet active. Uh, so in order to sort of try and improve that situation, we are doing a two-step solution. So the first step is how do we define better requirements for org membership to begin with? And then finally, how do we identify and uh, provide a consistent way to handle uh, stale contributors or people who moved on to other projects or who've become emeritus approvers and emeritus reviewers and so on. So we recently updated our org membership requirements to be more specific, to be more um, current and to adapt better to our uh, recent situation. Uh, so what that means is we updated our inactivity period, which was we defined our member to be inactive if they were inactive for 21 months. Now we have defined them to be inactive if they, if, they were, if they are inactive for a period of 12 months. And criteria for what constitutes an org member is also more well-defined now. Subsequently, um, as I said, whatever we do is backed by automating that process. So we're working on automating, auditing all of our Kubernetes org members. Uh, so this particular piece of work done by Nabarun, so he's also another chair of Contribex. Um, scrapes dev stats, scrapes GitHub, collates all of these insights and tells us that, okay, we have X, Y, Z. These are the set of folks that are potential uh, people to reach out to and remove from the org uh, altogether. Again, the verification of that list is done manually because automation is never trusted, uh, is never full proof, and these are things that we don't want to get wrong. Awesome. So. Uh, as I said, the way you uh, apply for an org membership is to create a GitHub issue. And we have roles in the community called new membership coordinators who sort of uh, evaluate these requests and create pull requests to add you into the org. Uh, recently, we have, we've had a few new new membership coordinators. And the process of all of this was sort of institutional. It was in our own minds till now. So Jason Braganza has done a lot of work um, in documenting that process for new people who want to help out with this sort of work in the community. So thank you so much, Jason. That's, that's really amazing. Okay, so, um, yeah. Another thing I want to talk about with community sustainability is something that's very important to me. Um, making sure that contributors are recognized for their work. One piece of that uh, in Kubernetes is named roles. So... The benefit of having named roles within an open source project is that it's a formal recognition of someone's effort and skill and time that they've poured into this project. It formally gives contributors ownership of certain areas of the project. Um, it can also, since they have a title, they have connections at the same level, kind of within the contributor ladder, it gives them other avenues to seek help when they need some help in the project. Um, and it means that once you become a leader of a certain area, you need to train the next person who's gonna come after you. So that role gives you a responsibility to uh, train others and pay it forward. So there's a lot of great things about implementing roles. And I am also a subproject lead of the contributor comms subproject, Contributor Communications. 
And we did this whole thing where we spent months working with our regular contributors to decide what roles we thought we needed within our team. So we established several different roles. Um, the one that I really want to point out is the subproject lead uh, role, which the uh, special interest group for contributor experience, which was on the last slide actually, um, this little issue here in the, the corner is that we made it an official part of the special interest group's governance um, that subproject leads are a role that exists within our SIG. Um, the other ones are just kind of ones that our group came up with. They're not officially mandated by the SIG, but we did it anyway. Um, so roles are a great thing to help with contributor sustainability. Awesome. So uh, now that we have an official role called subproject lead across all six in the Kubernetes community, so the PR that you saw was by Nabarun again, uh, who, was, who is one of our coaches, and a Kubernetes steering member. Now that we have things like that in place, we, we are in a better position to understand where Kubernetes is right now and where it's headed in the future. And a few very interesting patterns start to emerge as we sort of think about this a little bit. So. Reflecting that on, uh, on that part a little bit, right? So in any open source project, open source projects are always in a need of help. No matter how many people you have, they always are going to need help, which is what makes them really amazing. It, it makes them a great avenue to be a part of. It makes them a great avenue to have a sense of belonging in. Now, the way you get new help is you do outreach or folks find you in an organic manner however it may be. So you have new contributors entering into what is called a contributor funnel, and project maintainers are happy to help new folks in the way they best know how to, and provided how, what their bandwidths are like, because project maintainers aren't always free and available to provide, the, pro, provide all the help that a person might need. So they help out as, as best they can, and you know, eventually, these new contributors become what are called as episodic contributors. Uh, so ECs, right? These contributors are folks who've crossed the threshold of effort. They've put in the effort, they've made certain contributions, and these are the people who are potential maintainers in the future. So these are the people who need the help to grow from where they are to become maintainers in the future. And ideally, if that sort of cycle continues, we are good. But that is not what we see happening. And as a result of which, episodic contributors, who are, by the way, potential maintainers, they've shown that they are capable of doing the work, they've put in the hours, they've put in the work, and now they've hit a roadblock, because after a certain point, after a certain number of contributions, and you want to work on bigger things, you need that much more help. But since that is not happening, they sort of start to leave, right? And these potential maintainers you have, you don't have them anymore. But we still need new folks, so let's do more outreach. But the thing is, maintainer bandwidth is still constant. That still has not increased. So we have all these new folks coming in. We have the contributor funnel filled with new contributors, but the maintainer bandwidth is still constant, while the episodic contributors are also decreasing. And because Kubernetes is huge as it is, the maintainer bandwidth is stretched thin, and new contributors also start to drop off because the maintainers aren't able to help them out, the maintainers aren't able to adequately help the episodic contributors out, so we don't know what's going on. And this isn't just some theory that I'm making up. Uh, these are, this is from actual data, right? And Castlin mentioned we have DevStats. So DevStats is a great source to see all of these contributor statistics of any project in the CNCF landscape. So you see two lines there. I don't know if it's very visible, but one of the lines is for new contributors year after year in the Kubernetes project, and one of the lines is for episodic contributors year after year in the Kubernetes project, and both are on a decline. Okay, so the solution to this is that we need to spend time nurturing episodic contributors more. It is better for the project, it is better for the new contributors, because now you have more people to help them out, which again is better for the project. So we've tried one-on-one -on -one mentoring in the Kubernetes project. We've had one-on-one -on -one mentoring ours as a mentoring sub-project initiative in the past. But one-on-one -on -one mentoring does not scale. Kubernetes or any moderately large open source project cannot afford to have one-on-one -on -one mentoring as its only way to help new people grow. It does not scale. So we've started to do mentoring cohorts. So cohorts started off 
uh, about a year and a half ago. We've, we started off with a couple of sub-projects. Uh, all of us standing here um, became leads of Contrabex through a mentoring cohort itself, which is kind of amazing in my opinion. Um, but since then, we've had so many other mentoring cohorts happen. We've had a mentoring cohort for six CLI and SIGAPs. We had a mentoring cohort for external DNS. We've had a mentoring cohort most recently for customize. And all of these mentoring cohorts have resulted in new reviewers and approvers being added for that project. So this is a proven method for your project or your sub-project to grow new people in. And Contrabex can help you do just that. So I would really highly encourage if you are a SIG sub-project lead or if you are a person maintaining a, a sub-project in a SIG and you are one of the only people doing it, reach out to Contrabex, help us help you start a mentoring cohort and let's grow more people in your project. So this is a quote from Natasha uh, Sarkar, who is a CLI customized maintainer. This is from the latest uh, mentoring cohort. So she said that they had five active participants, and one of them is on the way to become an official maintainer in January, which is amazing. Um, Natasha also had some really good insights as to what worked well for them and what didn't. So one of the things that she said that really stood out to me was an open admission of a need for help went a long way for that project. So how, accepting the fact that you need the help, your project needs the help of new maintainers and the need for newer reviewers and newer approvers um, set, the stand, uh, set, the, set the tone for when they started this mentoring cohort. Again, um, as a community grows, so does the undocumented context in it. So that can prove to be a huge barrier for folks who hope to grow in the community because you have discussions with people in person, you have discussions on Slack, which just get lost at the end of the day. And crucially technical points are lost. So as a result of which it becomes very hard to help document this and create sort of what is known as common knowledge in the community. So as part of that, we try and uh, have avenues to document some of this undocumented context that proves to be a barrier for contributors. So we have what is last week in Kubernetes development, which is a newsletter that goes out. Uh, it's part of the Contrabex comms that Castlin leads here. Uh, recently, we also started um, an interactive getting started with Kubernetes course online. So you can spin up a GitHub code space with the, with the Kubernetes code base. You can run unit tests in it, get familiar with how uh, CI, the CI works right in your browser itself. Uh, you can get familiar with how labels work in the Kubernetes community, how you can apply labels, how you can interact with the GitHub bot, all of that as an interactive course on the Kubernetes.dev website. So we don't need to do sort of um, uh, new, me new mentor, uh, new contributor workshops anymore. All of this is again documented and automated. Yeah, and again, you have contributor summits all across the globe, which is again a great way of sharing knowledge. All of these summits now, every room that uh, a session is in has a note taker, and all of these notes are then put back into the Kubernetes.dev site. So all of that is again available for people to go and take a look at. And that's it. Uh, that's all we have for you today. That's all the updates we have for the Contrabex session. Thank you so much for listening, and if you have any questions, we're here to answer it. And if you do have any questions, we would ask if you could please go over to the mic, even though it's very far away from many of you, most of you. Um, there are people watching online, and this is recorded, so if we can get them on the mic, that would be great if you don't mind. <laughs> Though I highly encourage you to ask questions, and if you're too afraid to go all the way to the mic, I will repeat it for you. Um, the, the first question is actually, can you, can you go back to a slide so that I can ask my question intelligently? Of um, course. The one on different types of project roles. This, I've been thinking about this a lot in terms of how we can the roles. take time back from maintainers doing things that are not 
special to their own skill and expertise and role. And, and I'm curious if, if that's how this is working in practice or is this just taking on additional overhead? So the idea that maintainers are often doing a lot of extra things that don't necessarily require their specific knowledge to maintain the code base, but if we can kind of portion off some of those activities into other types of roles that can pick up and say do issue triage versus leaving that all to the single maintainer. Um, and so when I saw this slide and thinking about how you're encouraging different types of roles, I'm curious if that's emerging from the immense overhead that is the Kubernetes broader project, this needs these other types of functions, or are you able to extract additional labor being done by maintainers that doesn't have to be done by maintainers? Awesome, I'm excited about this question. So this was the slide, right? So the way that we came up with these roles within contributor comms, like I said, we took months just talking with our contributors about like, what work are we doing right now? And how could we organize that? <laughs> so it wasn't something that we immediately knew or understood about our work. Um, but over time, we uh, kind of figured out, well, we have these tasks that are all on social media, so we'll put those all in a bucket. Um, we have all of these tasks which are regarding working with the blog, and that's a big enough chunk by itself that it's different from social media. It involves working with another group within the project. It should be its own bucket. Um, all of our automation, most of the team does not know how to, <laughs> how to manage. Many of our contributors are uh, non-code and they're not very familiar with the types of code that are used within Kubernetes and honestly our automation has nothing to do with the rest of the code in, <laughs> in Kubernetes. Um, we've just kind of figured things out that worked for us. Um, so maintaining that code, understanding it, and also figuring out new tools when we need them, also a separate role. Um, we did also have another role that isn't on here anymore that we've actually deprecated since we did this whole project, which was the events lead role, because the uh, SIG ContribX, of course, we do the contributor summits. We used to also have meet the contributors um, events that would happen regularly and like a, an open meet the contributor community call. I don't remember exactly what it was called now, because <laughs> one, of, one of those moments. Um, but we would, used to have more events where people could meet the community. Um, and so we had someone specifically dedicated, hey, make sure that that event is happening, that it has everything that it needs, that we are communicating that that event is happening to contributors. Um, but we got rid of a lot of those events, so we don't have that anymore. Now events have their own events lead that can talk to us if they need comms. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how we figured those roles out. Hopefully that's helpful insight. We have another great example uh, from the community SIG Docs. They have done a great job creating named roles. Um, I think they have a role called PR Triager, something like that, and they um, found great success in that role, and out of that role, a new role came up that, that is Issue Triager, I think, something like that. So yeah, a lot of SIGs are doing this, trying to chunk out the major, um, these kind of grunt tasks and put them into a named role so that people who are actually doing that task uh, are recognized under a, t a title, um, and yeah, that's helping us. So uh, I have two points there. Uh, first is sort of unrelated. So Thursday we have uh, meet the Kubernetes contributor community thing uh, that's happening. I don't remember which room exactly, but it's happening on Thursday. So all the maintainers of all the SIGs and all, all the contributors are going to be there. So uh, stop by, talk to us. We're also going to be there. Uh, second point is as the as in initially we showed there are multiple sub-projects under each SIG. Now, the thing with sub-projects is that, yes, sub-projects divides what work needs to be done, but the maintainers of these sub-projects often overlap with multiple of them. So if I'm a maintainer of sub-project A, I may, uh, there's a very good chance I'm a maintainer of sub-project B, C, and D as well. So the idea with sub-project leads was that if we can provide a named role for these sub-projects, uh, and this is, by the way, work that steering did for the most part, steering committee. Uh, if we can provide a role, and one of the benefits of doing this is that if we can provide a named role, then there's a clear person to go and talk to. Apart from all the formal recognition you get, there's a clear person that you can go and talk to uh, if you have questions about these things. And if I am a maintainer for sub-projects A, B, and C, and let's say uh, a a fellow contributor of mine is a project lead of subproject A, then I don't need to 
uh, I don't need to be the point of contact for that because that person probably has way more context than I do. And I'm just listed as a maintainer there because of past historical context. So uh, it's sort of like offloading a little bit, offloading and also better defining. So yeah, another question. Yeah, love the work that you guys are doing. Um, so Taylor uh, Donzal, uh, Jono Bacon and myself, uh, we recently ran the Zero to Merge um, mm -hmm. cohort and we took the first group uh, through and we want to continue to do that 365 I think we're in the first co uh, cohort we want to continue that into 2024 but there's another wave coming that we've started to think about and would love to collaborate uh, with yes. you around maintainers right how do we build so zero to merge is about building the funnel of new contributors and the second wave is how do we build from that pipeline, the path to maintainer. And a path to maintainer is a whole set of steps which you guys are, you know, have, are deep in. Part of that is, is giving the contributors the confidence that they can eventually become maintainers because you see those ECs that you call them sort of drop out over time because they either don't know the, how to continue and stay engaged and evolved and and hopefully stick around to become the maintainers. So the confidence that they should and can actually get there, that's what our next cohort around being the, this maintainer uh, boot camp. I don't know if that's the right word, but this maintainer boot camp is how do we take those those uh, contributors that have shown promise and then guide them with you know with. I don't think it's going to be one-on-one, -on -one, but it's like you did, the maintainer cohorts mm -hmm. um, to match them up and sort of show them the path, um, give them the confidence to stick around. Uh, so we'd love to collaborate on this, and we're thinking about launching it in 2024. Oh, that, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, let's talk, for sure. Cool. Yeah, I'll connect with Taylor on that. When he talked about that program this morning, I was like, ooh. <laughs> Any other questions? We have a couple more minutes. Dumb questions, welcome. We are SIG Contribex. Our whole thing is helping people do stuff that they want to do, <laughs> kind of. Helping contributors do fun stuff. Awesome. You can always find us, obviously, right here now. Um, but you can also always find us on slack.cates.io if you're on the Kubernetes Slack in SIG Contribex or ping us directly. We're always happy to help anybody um, who wants to get involved with the project. Uh, yeah. And uh, get involved with SIG meetings if you're trying to get involved with Kubernetes. You can find them on cates.dev slash calendar. Scan the QR code and leave feedback if you have any. Uh, also, happy to talk whenever. Feel free to ping any one of us. Okay, have a good rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you for attending.